Star of the show is the applesauce. Love apple mango, it's probably my favorite flavor, bulbous cap. And when I suck the applesauce out, it just makes me feel like I'm eight years old again. The applesauce is definitely there for me, you know? I love the applesauce, <laughs> love it. Hey, I'm Alan with REI, and I'm gonna talk about my favorite plant-based foods that fuel my run. Before I really started paying attention to what foods did for me, I just thought like, I'm running, I guess I can eat whatever, meet somebody at a trailhead and go get like a bear claw or some donuts or something like that. I just figured like, I'm running, this stuff doesn't sound terribly bad for me, so I'll eat it. But really not paying attention to the time of day or when I ate them, I think was probably the detriment that I saw. What I took away from that was bear claws aren't really that bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been eating mostly plant-based for a long time, but I, it was always based around like my ethics. I didn't really care what it was doing to me. I was just like, I feel good about the environment and the animals, so that's kind of what I did. I wasn't concerned about the content of fat or any of macro ratio, or I never even understood what those terms meant. But about last year, I had this episode where essentially I fainted unexpectedly. Luckily, I had a neighbor that she was able to kind of take me to the emergency room. I lost my balance. It was a lot of vertigo stuff and went to a couple specialists. And I was like, is there any indication of what happened? They're like, some of your vitamin levels are low. I kind of decided to focus more and be more intentional on nutritional value and just long-term health. So it kind of started off with just trying to be healthier and trying to make sure that I can kind of get all the nutrients that I needed, at least start to. And then I started to notice how it affected my running. I felt better when I woke up. I didn't feel as tired. I felt like I had more energy throughout the day, even though I was running more often. My pre-run fuel, try to keep it pretty simple. If I'm running first thing in the morning, then I'll start in my overnight fasted state. I might fuel on the run, but usually I'll just have some water before, settle my stomach, and then feel pretty good on my run. If I'm running in the afternoon, then I'll start with my morning smoothie. It starts with some bananas that you can kind of see in the almond milk down there. There's some spinach, there's some blueberries, chia seed, hemp seed, cacao, cayenne pepper, some turmeric, and some cinnamon in it. And it's just everything I didn't know I wanted until I had it every day. And now I just like, on days that I don't have it, if I'm traveling or if I'm camping or something, I'm constantly thinking of like, how could I bring my blender with me the next time, you know? It's probably my favorite thing to have pre-run if I'm gonna run later in the day. And then I'll probably move towards like some snacks, some peanut butter, some brown rice cakes. This will give me some protein, some other nutritional stuff that I'm looking for. And I might do some quick dates or applesauce before, and that'll give me that quick energy that I'll need and feel good if I'm gonna go on a run in the afternoon. If I'm gonna go on a run in the evening, then I'll do the smoothie, I'll do some snacks like the peanut butter and the rice cakes, and I'll do a salad. And the salad is mostly just so that I make sure I'm getting my nutrition throughout the day. So there'll be some power greens. And then right before my run, I'll probably do some quick sugars that are easy to absorb, like the dates or the applesauce. I think learning to fuel on my run was really interesting. And again, like a light switch went off when I heard like, you should be eating easily digestible sugars on your run or intaking that because your body's already working incredibly hard. And when it has to work harder to break down maybe fats or things that are not easily digestible, then it's where you can feel some problems. I think understanding that I had not felt great before, but that Ah, that's because I'm running, you know? So like, this is hard and like food's just gonna feel weird. And now it's like, oh, food doesn't have to feel weird. It can be something easily digestible, have a lot less fiber in it, have a lot less fat in it, and uh, my body can absorb it really quickly. So when I'm out running on the trail, it's pretty easy for me to carry my 12 liter vest and I can fit a bunch of these foods in there, which is nice because I always have that option to go for longer or to eat a little bit more depending on how I'm feeling. If I'm going out for an hour or longer, I try to have at least 100 calories per hour. That's what feels good for my body. A lot of times that feels good in the form of like nutrition that's mixed into my hydration and some easily digestible sugars in a different texture, sometimes applesauce, most of the time applesauce. So it'll be a mixture of two things. It'll be things that I can carry easily, stuff that I could pick up at the local REI, something like some honey singer waffles I can kind of fit into these vest pockets, some of the shop blocks. Sometimes I'll even split these up over two runs and I'll just use like a little tie to tie it in. It'll fit better in my vest the next time. I will do some natural stuff like some dates and some apples and I'll usually cut those up and put them in like a reusable stasher that'll kind of fit in my running vest. Usually on my road runs, my pace is a little bit 
bit more predictable and the terrain is as well. So I kind of know the amount of time that I'll be out for a little bit more. So I'll definitely take some water with me and that'll kind of fit in my running belt. And then I'll usually take applesauce and I'll put that in a short pocket that's either zippered or in my back pocket with my keys. And if I don't have any room or if I'm wearing shorts with a lot shorter pockets or no pockets at all, then I can usually fit some shop blocks into my running belt with my keys and my phone. A lot of my nutritional kind of guidance for myself is based on if I'm going to be out for an hour or more. But there are times when I go out for shorter periods of time or this year, something I'd never thought I'd do is like trying to run faster, which feels very weird and kind of like an ego thing. So I don't like to think about it very much, but it means that I'm out for perhaps less than an hour. And in those cases, I know what's good for me is probably not to consume nutrition on my run. At least that's what feels best for my body and to save that more for when I get back. I think when I'm doing shorter amounts of time, but perhaps I'm exerting myself, maybe I'm looking for some elevation gain, maybe I'm working on my speed, maybe I'm just trying to hit a certain goal. I know that I need more hydration during those efforts though. So I'm certainly taking more hydration with me, but I'm kind of leaving the nutrition at home. And then when I get back, then that's when I'm kind of refueling in that way. Most of my longer runs tend to be on the trail, which means that it'll take me a little bit of time to get from the trailhead back home where I can cook for myself, something that's really satisfying. And in those instances, as soon as I get back to the car, I'll have some of my favorite like salt replenishment foods, which are salted chips. I can't live without salted tortilla chips. And I'll have maybe some rice crackers. I will have some anti-inflammatory stuff, so um, maybe some dried fruit. Uh, sometimes that's some mango. Sometimes that's a little bit of pineapple in there. And I'll feel pretty good just immediately after my run having those snacks. Some other recovery and post-run considerations I have are how to replenish some of the electrolytes. So when I get back into my car, especially if I'm coming from a trail run, I'll have a bottle full of like some hydration that's infused with some of the noon tablets or some of the scratch powder uh, just to kind of help refuel that. There's also some natural replenishment for electrolytes. Uh, bananas are really good for that, so I might have that afterwards. It's also really hard. I heard somebody frame it in this way and it made total sense to me. They're like, if you're out and doing an endurance thing for four hours, like think about the amount of water you have to replace. Lots of times I'll have like a smoothie cup this full of just water as soon as I get back. Um, and then probably have a couple of these. So I'll be really conscious of the amount of water I have after the run or the really high exertion activity, just so that I can be able to feel like I'm rehydrating, my body feels better, and it kind of makes me feel like I have more energy. So I love to eat. Um, if you're like me and you like to eat as well, you're probably towards the end of your run looking at your watch, seeing what your calories are and like, oh, awesome. You're thinking about what those calories translate to on a plate when you get home. So I'm really excited to talk about post-run food. It used to be sometimes where I would look at like, okay, I burned this many calories, which means I can get a deep dish pizza. But once I started paying attention and eating a little bit more nutritionally dense meals, I noticed that maybe I didn't need to eat as many calories as I thought I needed to eat. I felt fuller longer. I felt like I had more energy. And that came from things like there was better proteins that I was consuming. There was more complete carbohydrates that I had. I can attribute the way I felt to the nutritional value in my food. And that made me feel like I could do more. Bigger meals for me, I try to stay with a pretty simple formula. I've heard some folks say with a grain, a green, and a bean, and that just is really easy for me to remember. Grains, right after I do a long run, I'll try to go with maybe white rice because it's easily absorbed through my body a little bit more. Brown rice has a little bit more fiber, which means I'll be fuller uh, for longer, but also means it'll take a little bit longer to kind of go into my body. And if I'm trying to refuel and I've done a pretty big effort, then I'll try to go with white rice. Usually I'll put a lot of amino acids on there so that it'll kind of have that salt on there, but it'll also be nutritional. For the bean, the easiest thing to do when I'm, I've just run for a couple hours, I don't really want to like start to boil beans and make beans and do all that. I'll reach for the canned refried beans. Usually just a few ingredients in there. There's salt in there most of the time, or there's non-salted versions. You can add the amount of salt you want. And then I'll just add a ton of veggies. I've heard once somebody say like, just eat as many colors as you can. And I think that's what I try to do. So I'll grab some like carrots, some peppers of different colors, some sweet potatoes, some green beans, which is again, another bean and giving you more of some of that nutritional value. Sometimes if I want to treat myself, I'll add some plant-based protein. So for me, a lot of times that's tofu. If I'm feeling like I really want to splurge, then I'll go with some like impossible meats in there. 
um, and just add that to even maybe some pasta or maybe some stir fry just to give myself a little bit more flavor and it also adds a little bit more protein there. So that's a little bit about my running journey and how it's helped me really level up my nutrition game. But I'm curious to see if y'all have suggestions, things that I should try, things that I haven't found out about yet, things that you like to eat during your runs, after your runs, before your runs. Stoked to read the comments. It sounds weird, but I kind of like leaving the banana peel in the car and then coming back and my car smells like banana. I kind of like that smell. Um, so. <laughs>